I was in Great Bend on Sunday, and I'm in Great Bend now. <laughs> I'm in Kansas, and the big news this week is I am halfway across the country. Yeah, I've made almost a thousand miles. In fact, today it adds up to a thousand miles. Over a thousand miles. Yay! <laughs> and really, it's like one of my friends said it should be called The Kindness of Strangers. I should call my project that. Because it really is amazing how nice that it is. And, you know, and, and like even just really random stuff like people who pull up and give me a bottle of water or. It's called Walking Home. Walking Home. That's so cool. <laughs> it's actually called Walking Home, Stories from the Desert to the Great Lakes. The highlights of this week were that I went to the county fair in Kinsley, the Edwards County Fair, and got to see the, the uh, pigs get judged, and I got to see the um, you know crafts and all of the different... Uh, corn and actually milo and wheat that was being grown and it was actually really cool I hadn't been to a county fair in a really long time and it's something that I was hoping to do on this trip because it just seems so homebound and the woman who took me over there I asked her if she had done 4-H she, she said no no but my children had went to the county fair and one of the things, um, so my ho my host had had, she and her husband had had a farm for years and years and years, a family farm, and finally sold it and opened the Two Elks Lodge. And I went into the lodge and it was all deer and antelope heads and stuff like that all the way around the world. Or, um, it reminded me of the antler bar back in Pentwater in my hometown. And it's funny because, you know, I, I brought them and they, she said, we do have dinner for $8 if you want to do dinner. And often I don't stay in hotels and motels very much, but that was one of those towns where I didn't have anything lined up. And the person I stayed with in Spearville had said, why don't you just go to the Two Elks Lodge? It's very reasonable. They're nice people. And they were very nice. But anyway, I show up and she's like, we, we, you, we, we do provide dinner for $8 and we're having salmon. And I said, oh, I don't eat fish. And I know she was looking at me like, oh, you're a vegetarian and we're a hunting lodge. <laughs> so, but they were very nice there. And she took me to the county fair and she said that her kids had participated in 4-H. And she said, you can really tell the difference between kids who do 4-H and kids who don't. track here. Let's see if it's over here. Oh, tall grass. And no two track. Well, maybe I'm better off over on the other side. Ah, these are tomatillas. I thought they looked like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. See, there's a little fruit inside of this thing. That is a tomatillo.
trucks drive into the, you know, big rigs drive in to the co-ops and fill up the grain towers or get grain. The railroad comes through and fills up cars. They drive right under them and, you know, fill them up. And uh, they're just impressive. They're they're interesting. Each each set of grain elevators is a little different, and I find them really beautiful. I don't know why. They just they're just interesting to me. So I've been taking pictures of them. And um, the steam engines could only go about 17 miles before they needed to refuel. So there's a town every you know, 10 to 17 miles. I haven't had to walk farther than that since I hit Kansas. Yay! Oh, I'm at mile 111. That's cool. And the guy I stayed with, he plays bluegrass music. He plays mandolin. And he plays folk and bluegrass folk and gospel and stuff like that. And he was telling me all the different people he's played with. And Interesting guy. Anyway, before I got there, the other guy went to warn him. He didn't know what him, but like tell him I was coming. I said, I'll tell you if you're coming. So I saw because they were like, you know, a small town, like a hundred and something people. And uh, when I got there, he said, yeah, he said, There's, she's a real young lady. <laughs> and I thought, he thought I was in my 20s or something. And I'm like, well, I turned 40 yesterday, so I'm not a real young lady. He's like, well, you're young enough to be my daughter. I'm going to Dodge City, which will be, woohoo, I'm going to go to Boot Hill, and I'll spend an extra day and get caught up on stuff, and also do a little touristy stuff, I do believe. So. I actually find this area really beautiful. I find everything beautiful, though, but I just, I love, and it's, and I know it's sort of a sad thing, but all these brown fields and the golden hay fields that have been cut, and the like grass is all golden, everything being all dried. It's all these beautiful shades. It reminds me of like a Winslow Homer, or a, you know, not a Winslow Homer, um, what's his name, Winslow painting, you know, with like just desolate with a little farmhouse off in the distance. I love it. You can see forever and lots of pretty clouds. No, there's hills. There's hills. I'm going up a hill right now. It's like hardly a hill. But I, you know, I love that because my legs are happy. <laughs> I've got short, I've got short distances on flat ground. I cannot tell you how exciting that is. <laughs> Every hill is like, oh my God, Kansas is going to be so boring. And I'm like, oh, I love Kansas. Thank you, Kansas. You could be a little cooler. But there's always a light breeze once it gets hot. There's, and there's, it hasn't been the wind that I had. Oklahoma? Oh my God, I thought I was going to die. Every day, the wind was so strong. I couldn't make a phone conversation. I couldn't hear myself think. I kept thinking about the 1920s movie, The Wind. It's a silent film, but it's about the Dust Bowl. And this woman just goes mad out in her little cabin. And that happened to a lot of people because the wind blew for three years. You know, with that black dirt coming in. Yeah. Yeah, and people got lung diseases and died. You know, they talked, I was listening to, uh, I, I looked up an NPR story called The Worst Hard Time. And it's about a book this guy wrote about that time period, not about the people who left. Steinbeck wrote about them. He wrote about the people who stayed. And uh, the ones who stayed, they're tough. You know, they, they just scratched out a living out of the dirt, grew what vegetables they could grow in their yard, and made it. And uh, they're, that's the people who live here now. They're the descendants of that. So, it's kind of interesting. But, you know, some people went crazy. Lots of people left. Everybody in the whole country was in depression, and here it was, like, far, far, far worse. Worst, worst, worst. Yeah. And the topsoil blew off. And most people now do... Well, almost everybody here does no-till farming, and they do a lot, of a lot of irrigation, so it would be the Dust Bowl right now if it weren't for that.